This segment of Hack 5 is brought to you by Ting. They can stall at a certain point, um, but just for now, we're going to run it from right in here. And the first thing I want to know is what port do you want to run this on? Um, I wouldn't recommend running it on anything less than 1024. That said, let's go with 27015. Even though that's not your stereotypical IRC port, it should be fun because that's reminds me of Counter-Strike and that was fun. Uh, now, would we like to listen on SSL? We're just gonna bypass some of this. We're not gonna bother with IP6 for right now and we're gonna listen on all hosts. Now, we need to set up a username and there's a user for every network that will be associated with our IRC server. So if you hang out on Freenode, in addition to hanging out on like, I don't know, irc.hack5.org and irc.twit.tv and all the other places you hang out, you're gonna need a different username for all of those. We're gonna call this one Hack5 IRC. And we're going to give it a lame password and confirm it. And we're going to make it an admin. And we're going to call our Nick uh, Bob underscore Boberson. And our alternative nickname with the underscore. And our ident will leave as default and we'll change our real name to Bob. Uh, we're going to not bother with the bind host. And we're going to leave it, the rest of the stuff here as defaults. All right, so the IRC server in this case is going to be irc.hack5.org. It's going to be on the stereotypical 6667 port. It doesn't have a password to get in, so you guys can all just join us there. And it does, well, it does have an SSL, but we're not going to bother with that right now. We're just going to do the standard old sniff my traffic ports. Um, now, would we like to add another server? No, there's only one server for it. And if there is more than one, irc.hack5.org will round robin you and get you to all of them anyway. And is, are the, I love this. So now we can actually go ahead and set it so that it will automatically join us to certain channels that we like to hang out in. And then later on, you can even add like perform actions to take care of your Nick serves and stuff like that. So the channel name in this case is Hack5. And no other channels that we like to hang out in. And we do not want to create another user. But if we did, we could just say yes here and do one for all the other IRC servers that we hang out in. And then finally, we can go ahead and launch it. And it says, all you have to do is head over to 27015 on the IP address of our server with um, HTTP. And we can get to the admin panel. And so now that's running. And if I pull up my xchat, and now if I issue slash server, uh, ddk.hack5.org, the uh, domain for my virtual private server at domain.com, rather than actually going to the irc.hack5.org on the 27015 port. And now we have to issue our username, which we set up as hack5irc. This way we can do multiple you know, servers all going to our same VPS, colon, that lame password we set up. And we'll be connecting to an IRC session already in progress. And we can see we already have lines buffered played back here. See, uh, buffer playback, playback complete. And we're watching DD3 uh, talk to the rest of the gang. So there you go. I mean, how cool was that? And this way, we can always stay in the channel. We can actually use multiple IRC clients. So if you say, want to keep an IRC client on your cell phone and on your laptop, and you, know, you can always check in and always be on the same page. It's pretty cool. Um, and if we actually go to the web interface, and I go to ddk.hack5.org slash, or colon 27015, I can log in as hack5irc and the lame password. And there we go. And you can see I don't have any modules right now. I can actually slash message asterisk uh, status help. And that will go ahead and pull up a window here with status. And I can talk to status. And I can load modules. And I can see available modules. If I scroll up here, it's uh, list available mods is one of the commands that I can give it. And it will go ahead and tell me that there are no modules available. There typically are, but like I said at the top of this, I don't have Perl and Python and, and um, TCL installed. But if I did, I would have some pretty cool modules. Specifically, the ones that I like are like Perform, and there's ones that will join the channel if you get kicked, and things of that sort. Uh, and you can go wild with this. You can do IP6. You can set up SSL and you know things of that nature. And you know ZNC. Uh, you know, since it uses a different user per network, it's great because now you can have 
one thing up in the cloud, in this case, my domain.com virtual private server that's always connected to my various networks, and I can just choose in my client which one of those I want to go ahead and join. Uh, so there we go, that is ZNC in a nutshell. It's my favorite IRC bouncer, and I'd love to hear what you guys think. I know that I'm just scratching the surface when it comes to this kinds of stuff, but uh, really, I hope this gets you started, and I hope you guys will join us in irc.hack5.org. I've been idling there for quite a while, and uh, it's lots of fun, um, as well as other fun places on like Freenode. I hang out in pound hack5 on irc.freenode, just because, you know, why not? And so, um, anyway, with all of that, uh, hit up feedback at hack5.org. If you'd like to see more on this kind of topic, we'll do egg drops, I don't know. <laughs> but uh, when we get back, we're gonna have some fun authentication tricks with Shannon after a quick break. Guys, I can't be the only ones frustrated with the way mobile phone companies work, with their plans, they're confusing, they're riddled with hidden fees, unnecessary rules, steep premiums, and sadly, as a consumer, you're pretty much powerless, which is why I'm so happy that Ting.com is here and they get it, and that's why they've put together a new kind of mobile phone service. They're run by a bunch of cool geeks up in Canada, and get this, they think that you should only be paying for what you actually use, not some package deal that you may or may not go over and be penalized for. I know I personally use them with pineapple because SSH traffic isn't very intensive and they've got great rates on data. I love paying for what I use. With Ting, you pay individually for text messages, for minutes, and for megabytes. They're on the Sprint network. They've got 4G, Android phones, and like I said, some damn good data devices, especially if you're running Linux. And best of all, when you call them up, get this, you get a human that can actually help you on the phone. I know, what's up with that? So best of all, they're offering for you, our awesome Hack5 viewers, $50 off any hardware when you visit ting.com slash hack5. No promo code, you just hit that landing page and you're off to the races. So go ahead and head over there now and check out their online savings calculator. I think you'll see for yourself how phone service should be. And that's ting.com slash hack5 and we thank them greatly for their support. This week, I wanted to show you guys some really quick steps that you can take in Windows 7 to make your machine a little bit more secure. Now, I found these steps over at the Customized Windows blog with some very, very helpful screen caps. I mean, it's super easy, super crazy easy. All right, we're all familiar with the authenticator keys and all those that are out on the market, but if you don't have some sort of authentication key to use with your machine, you can create one out of a USB key that will only allow you to log on to your Windows 7 computer if you have the key plugged in. So, in a sense, it's one thing that you know and one thing that you have. Aha! Basically, there is this very secure database in the operating system of Windows 7 called the Security Accounts Manager, or SAM for short. And it's encrypted and it's stored locally on your computer. Now, if you move that encryption key to your USB drive, you'll only be able to log on to the OS if it's plugged in. And this will work for all users, not just the admins or the regular users, but anyone that uses the OS. So first off, what you need to do is plug in your drive, of course. You click Start, and you go over to Computer and choose Manage. Or not Internet Explorer. <laughs> Computer, and then Manage. From here, you need to choose Disk Management, right-click on your USB drive, and choose Change Drive Letter or Pass. So Disk Management is under here under Storage. Let it load up. And down here, my A drive, it used to be Letter H before I actually tested this on my machine yesterday. So I right-click on it, and I choose Change Drive Letter or Pass. Highlight Letter A and choose Change. And then I go up to A, click OK. It's obvious it's, it's already there, so I just hit Cancel since it's already been changed. And then I click OK again. Now that part's done. The next part that you have to do is change a couple of security prompts. And you can just click through all those. Now the drive letter is A. Awesome. OK, so you can close this disk management. And then you need to go back to your Start menu and run SysKey. So just type in SysKey. This is a tool that's going to enable more encryption. So you just click Update, Encryption Enabled, choose Update. 
and it's going to give you a couple of options. The first one is store startup key on a floppy disk, and the one that's probably already chosen for you is store startup key locally. This means that you can only log on with the key that's locally on your machine. What you want to do is change that to store startup key on a floppy disk. Also, it can be a USB flash drive, obviously. You click OK, and it's going to give you a couple more security prompts. Please insert the current startup key disk into drive. Press OK in order to authorize this change. If you do not have the disk, contact your administrator. So I click OK. Into drive A, that's why we changed the name, because it only works for drive A. That will be used to save the startup key. Click OK. And then it's telling me that there's already a file on my disk called syskey.key. Obviously, I did this again last night, so it has been renamed to startupkey.bak, and it's going to add the new key on there now. It's been saved. The disk will be required to start the system, and then click OK. And the account database startup key was changed. So after you've clicked through all of those remaining prompts, go ahead and restart your computer. Now, if you don't have your USB drive inserted, it's going to prompt you about it, and then when you plug it in, you'll see your usual login screen. So the cool thing I thought about this was the fact that if you have Comboot, it's not going to work with the syskey not plugged into your machine. So for example, you restart your computer and you have Comboot plugged in and you think, all right, this is cool. I'm just going to you know, plug in some gibberish at the login prompt and I'll be able to get into my admin computer for my Windows 7 operating system. But if you don't have the USB key with the sys key on it, it's still going to prompt you during the login process and say, hey, you can't boot up until you plug this into your machine. So if you don't have that, Comboot's not going to work. But make sure you're careful about this, though. Don't lose your USB key, because if you do, you'll have to reformat your computer. I haven't figured out a way around this, so if you guys know a way around that, let me know. And also, don't delete the sys key off of your USB drive, because Obviously, that's important. Now, if you ever want to go back to just regular old Windows without the login on the USB syskey, just go back to the syskey program and choose Store Startup Locally. It's easy as chicken wings. Now I'm really hungry. Chicken wings. I guess those aren't very easy to make. Huh. Anyway, what do you guys think? Email me over at feedback at hack5.org, or you can comment in the section below. Coming up soon, we'll be answering your viewer questions, but first, let's take a break and check in with Darren for the nibble.